Welcome, this is now uh, question 5 for um, NXL's M1 uh, June 2015 paper. Now, um, as again, I've drawn the basic diagram on the board here. Uh, we've got this uniform rod, which is uh, 5 metres. I'll come on to the bit about uniforming on it. Um, we've got two supports. We've got a support A right at the start. Um, I obviously call that support A at point A, um, wrinkly enough. And then 0.5 metres from the end, uh, we've got support C, um, weirdly enough, at point C. We've also got uh, point B, which is right at the end uh, of the 5 metre rod, um, and it's got a mass of 60 kilograms, and obviously, therefore, weight of 60 times 9.8, whatever that is. Um, now, we're asked to find the support at A. Now, personally, I always hate these moments questions. However, when you get a question like this, it is ridiculously simple if you follow this um, simple procedure. Now, they will not ask you why you do this method, um, but every single question that I've ever done, it works on. Um, and, well, I'm sure there is some phys theory behind it and physics behind it, um, which I'll try and explain, but I kind of said that, I, I kind of put the idea really to bed. Um, what I'm just trying to say is, if you don't get this method, um, why I do it, if you just follow the principles behind it in terms of uh, the certain method to working it out, then you should be perfectly fine. Because it works for all questions that are like this, where you've got two support forces and you've got to work out the, the um, force at each support. Okay. Um, as I said, I'll try and uh, break it down in terms of the actual theory behind it, but if you don't get it, don't worry. The first part, we're asked to work out the support at point A. So, obviously, we need to take moments at A. So, when we say taking moments at A, it's just a fancy way of saying, let's position ourselves at point A and see what moments we have affecting us. Well, now, the only... So, remember what... Obviously, this is an equilibrium. Um, so, the moment... Oh, oh, sorry, actually, before we start talking about that, um, before, oh, I should have done this really first, um, before we started to get into do any physics or maths or mechanics at all, we need to break this down in terms of, um, because we haven't considered A, the weight of the rod and the distance from each point to the, each support force. Now it's uniform, that means the centre of the mass occurs at the centre of the object, so it's halfway long. So if we put a point, well, I'm just going to call it, um, I don't just a mass. Um, you could call it point M if you wanted. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're told it's got a mass of twenty-five kilograms, so just straight down of twenty-five kilograms times nine point eight, because obviously we're considering weights. Um, and obviously that's a distance of two point five meters from the start or from A. Now it's not two point five meters to C because there's zero point five meters from C to the end. So therefore, 2.5, take the 0.5 distance over here, and obviously this gives us the mass to C, a distance of 2 metres. Okay, so we've broken it down, and we can work out the distance from any mass, either of these two masses, to either of the two support forces. Okay, so it's nicely set out for us. Now, when we're at point A, we need to consider, okay, well, it's an equilibrium, so the clockwise moments are going to be equal to the anti-clockwise moments. So, the anti-clockwise moments um, obviously go this way round, and the clockwise moments go that way round. Okay? Clockwise, typical. Um, so, basically, this support force C, it isn't going to go straight up and continue going up and up. It's This support force, really, it's not really realistically drawn. It's going to do something like this. So, if we were at A, the support force C is going to be sort of acting as though it's going in an anti-clockwise matter, okay? So, if it's going in an anti-clockwise motion, then obviously that is going to go on the anti-clockwise side of the board. However, moments are force times distance. So, that's a force. We've got to do it to the distance um, to A, because that's the uh, anti-clockwise moment. So, it's SA times 4.5 metres. Or another way of thinking about it is, if you if that confuses you, the first part, so whatever support force you're trying to work out, 
in this case SA, we do the distance, we do the we times that by the distance to the other support force, okay? Because it's gonna be bearing on each other. And then you do it equal to all the other uh, weights times the distance to the other support force, okay? So 25 kilograms times 9.8, whatever that is, that's the weight, remember, times the two meter distance to C. Plus the 0.5 meters times the weight at B, which is 60 kilograms times 9.8. Okay? And then you simplify that down, so then you would divide both sides by 4.5. So, sorry, to one sec. So, I'll try and explain this right bit. So, why have we timed it all to point C, and why haven't we done it to point A? Well, Remember, these are clockwise motions, yes? Um, uh, sorry, actually, um, I don't have an answer to that one. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if I've said it right at the beginning. Support force at A. Well, actually, um, yeah, screw that. I'm completely messed up again at the starting. Sorry. So when you work, want to work out support force at A, then you take moments from C. So if you're taking moments from C, then obviously that's a clockwise force equal to these anti-clockwise forces. Yes, because they're pulling it this way. All right. Um, so completely contradictory to what I said at the start. Um, okay. So if you want to take, if you want to work out one support force, you take moments from the other support force, okay? So that's kind of why we've done these two points C. All right, so as I said, hopefully that makes a bit more sense now. I think I've just taught moments, so correct a moment for myself there. Um, so therefore you would get an answer, uh, oh, I've done it wrong on there, so uh, I'm just gonna work this out now. Sorry about this. So 25 times 9.8 times two. Sorry, I do apologise, folks. Don't know what I'm saying for folks like someone's not just going to listen. Um, now you add that to 0.5 times 60 times 9.8. Normally I'm not smoother at this, but whatever. And that's 784 newtons over 4.5. Therefore, is a hundred. So therefore, we say SA is equal to a hundred and seventy-four newtons. Okay. So same principle. If we want to take, if we want to work out what SC is, we take moments from point A. So, um, so therefore, this is A part two now. So it's SC times four point five. Because if we want to work out, we want to work out point uh, support for C. We take moments from A. Um, so therefore, we look at the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments at uh, at A to work out um, C. So the anti-clockwise moments is kind of what we said in the first part. So it's this plane, the anti-clockwise way, so it's put for C. So it's SC times the distance, which is 4.5 meters, is equal to the clockwise. So it's the uh, 2.5 times 25 times 9.8 plus the 5 meters times the weight of that one okay so i guess i should have worked out what these individual ones are but you know sack it uh so that is equal to 25 times 9.8 which is the weight of the times the 2.5 meter distance plus sorry do apologize about the writing times the five meters times the 60 times 9.8 Okay, and then a simple thing, you would uh, rearrange that, work out what this is, um, and then divide it by 4.5 metres. Or you could just work out the forces pulling it up and take that away from the forces pulling it down, or whatever. But you could also do it this way, which I think is the more logical way, because then you can think through it quite easily. Uh, so the same principles applies. 2.5.
and then uh, for support force C is 790 newtons or 789 newtons in core support force C. Okay. Right, so hopefully that made some kind of sense. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, obviously give the video a little pause so I can rub this punk stuff off because I've used too much board space and my camera needs charging. Uh, so it'll just be a second. Well, welcome. This is now um, sort of rubbed off of the little bits of information there. So we're on to part uh, B. Um, so we're told particle P is removed. So basically this is now changed at B. Uh, we don't know what mass this is, obviously. They times it by 9.8 as before to get the weight of this um, object. But we just place a new mass at P. We're not told what it is. Um, given that the beam remains in equilibrium, uh, find the greatest possible value of this new mass that we've attached. Now, if we... Uh, the most the extreme mass we could put on here occurs where the tension in A is zero because then it's all suspended at this point C. Um, and the reason for that um, is because if we could, ha if we still had weight over here, if we still had a support force over here, then we could still add more to this mass. I guess that's kind of seeing the same thing. Um, but you either get that or you don't. Um, but you just need to understand, uh, really, we just need to be focused, to, to get the most mass, we can just focus on the support point C. So what I've done is I've drawn this uh, rather crude looking diagram here. Uh, obviously the mass of the uniform rod hasn't changed. So as before, we've still got 25 kilograms times 9.8 to get the weight of this rod. Um, and that's 2 metres from C. Now unlike, unlike we did before to work out the support force C, um, well, we're not going to be doing that. Um, we don't have to times it to the other support force, and that's because we're not considering how strong the support force is, we're just considering what's the most mass we can put on this side. Because the most mass we can put on this side will be equal, the moment will be equal to the 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 um, anti-clockwise moment of this 25 times 9.8. Okay? So, that's why we do that. So therefore, it's just whatever 2 times 2 metres times um, the weight, which is 25 times 9.81, or 9.8, sorry, is equal to 0 0.5 times the weight of the new mass, which is m kilograms times 9.8. So what we do, therefore, is we just simplify this equation. So you do 2 times um, 25 times 9.8. So you do, you work out what 25 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 245. Times that by two, you get 490 newton meters. And that is equal to 0 0.5 times the mass. So um, you divide both sides by 0 0.5, which obviously doubles this 490. So times two, that gets you 980 newton meters. Is equal to the mass in kilograms times 9.8. So therefore, you divide both sides by 9.8. So therefore you get the mass equal to 100 kilograms. Okay, so that's how you work out part B. Uh, part A2 is uh, find the greatest possible tension in the rope attached to the part uh, at part C. Well we know the maximum mass we can attach at this point is 100 kilograms. So you just work out the tension as you did before, uh, the support force at C. So as though you at a so remember if you're trying to work out the support force at one point you uh, take moments from the other support force if that makes um, some kind of sense so so I'll get my uh, answers up before I start making another mess so we want to work out this support force at C so we imagine we're at A but this mass now becomes 100 not just M Okay, so you did it as you did before, trying to work out C. So SC times, so ignore this, this is the old support force, so don't use that, times 4.5 metres. I'm not going to go through why we use each part, because that kind of explained in the first little part of the video. Um, and that's 25 uh, times 9.8, so that's the force, remember. The distance 
to um, A, so that's 2.5 metres, plus 100 kilograms, we know is the mass, times 9.8, times the distance, which is 5 metres, okay? And then you get a value for SC, which you should get 125 newtons. Sorry, I just um, had it there, because, you know, it's uh, not the smoothest thing to just type in your calculator when there's only a little bit of the question to go. Okay, so hopefully that was of some help. Um, I do apologise about rushing through that last little bit. Um, it wasn't much of a question. I mean, the main bit is understanding this, that's why, um, in terms of the maximum mass. And the key thing is you have to understand that there's no tension at A, um, or the support force in A, there's no tension in that when there's a maximum, because you have to... Um, because if, if there was still tension there, you could you still increase the mass and it would still balance out because there's still a force pulling it up this way. Okay, that's the key bit of information to get in this question. Um, if you got that, then you could have just got part B by working out the support forces you did in part A. Okay. Now, a uh, key thing here is um, you're familiar with the area carried forward mark in these exams. So, you know, if you get part A wrong, but then you use that incorrect answer for part B and do the right working out, then you will still get the marks. So, even if you didn't get the initial part of B, you, uh, what I would suggest you do is just look at this and, and come up with a, an estimated guess of what it could be. So, you could say, okay, well, let um, this maximum weight be um, 150 kilograms, because that looks relevant. It's, it's not like a thousand kilograms, and it's not like five kilograms, is it? So it's obviously got to be greater than 60 for a start, for a kickoff, uh, because we had 60 as an initial mass, so can't be less than that. So you just say something reasonable and assume this is the maximum weight, and then go on to the second part of part B and um, use that mass in it uh, as a maximum and work out the support force at C as you did in part A. Well, as I said, that's only if you didn't get the initial part of B. That was quite a hard part of that uh, moments question. The first part, if you get moments, it was it was fairly standard. Um, but the second half of it was a little bit more complex. But as I said, you either get that or you didn't. Um, so you either got part B, uh, the first initial part of B, and then most people just went on and got the right answer. But if you didn't get the initial part of B, uh, and most students who took the exam didn't. Um, well, that's just going off the people I know who took it. Uh, but as I said, that's not an official report, so, uh, you know, don't arrest me, but as I said, more than welcome to. Uh, I had enough for life anyway, so. Uh, uh, so anyway, as I said, um, it's just a case of uh, estimating a right guess um, for what the maximum mass could be in input and input in as you did before. Um, but it's quite a nasty little bit, so don't worry too much um, if you didn't get the last little bit. I'd be more concerned if you missed out the first bit. But then again, why would you be watching this video? Um, so anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.